Okay, so community. A community is a reflection of what we crave, belonging. Belonging is the heart of human connection. Our hardwiring is to be social creatures and to need one another. We cannot become our best selves without feeling like we belong to a tribe that sees us, respects us, and lifts us up. A sense of belonging can be fostered in many ways, food, music, volunteering, a cause. You can scan a room and see a diversity of backgrounds, ages, and skill sets. Yet the common thread is shared desires and aspirations. It's magnificently profound how simple this connection is, how deeply we all crave it, and how it changes the trajectory of our lives. Today's speaker is Michael Dunlavey. He is one of the founding members of Sacramento's modern creative community. Michael has done, designed over 500 corporate identity programs in his 40-year career as a graphic designer, environmental designer, and a restaurant designer. He founded the Dunlavey Studio with his wife, Lindy, in 1978, where he served as president and creative director. Now a watercolor painter, he draws inspiration from his extensive travel experiences throughout the world. He has demonstrated a deep love for and commitment to the arts community and has sat on the board of directors of the Crocker Art Museum Association for 11 years and the Sacramento Region Community Foundation for 10. So today, we are structuring our talk a little bit differently. You might have noticed there's duels up here. Our guest has so much experience in the creative community. He's one of the founding members of ADAC, the art directors and artists club, which probably most of you don't remember. I do. I was in Sacramento for just a couple years while it was still happening. And I wanted to hear from his perspective, you know, how he started it, how we can keep our community going. So he has so much experience in this community, we decided we'd rather take this opportunity to pick his brain and ask the questions we really wanted answered. So Britt Wesley, she's one of our lovely organizers and works with individuals and businesses to tell their story. So she is so great at getting at the heart of a person's story, I asked her to sit with Michael, brave her stage fright, and chat about his career. It's gonna be great. We'll have plenty of time for Q&A still. So Britt, I will let you take it from here. Go ahead. Welcome, guys. Good morning, everyone. Hi there. You're gonna take it, so go ahead. Okay, thank you so much for being here. So I thought we could maybe start this off by having you tell us a little bit about when you fell in love with art and when you discovered that you could make a career out of it. Well, I'm still trying to figure out how to make a career out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I knew I was going to be an artist uh, when I was about 11 years old. And the reason is I was exposed to it at a young age. Uh, my father was an engineer and a watercolorist and my mother was a ballerina and taught ballet. And uh, the, the amazing part uh, is that uh, I was exposed to all the, these creative talents, and then my wife, Lindy, there, there's no artist in her background, and yet she rose to probably be the top graphic designer in the whole region. And so it's kind of interesting. Sometimes you're somewhat born with it and exposed to it, and other times not at all. So um, I wanted to give you a little bit of background about what it was like in the old days. You know, I remember the covered wagons when they came across from St. Louis. <laughs> this is way before the arch, you know. So anyway, uh, I went to high school with John Sutter. I don't, I don't know if you have ever heard of him. He has that fort place, you know. He did pretty well. And then. Uh, his buddy James Marshall discovered gold, and that's while I was still in high school. So we were quite close. But uh, anyway, um, I want to tell you a little bit more detail, a little bit more personal background, and uh, talk about the pitfalls of uh, starting your own business, but the things you have to get over in life that uh, sometimes are shocking and that you never thought would happen. And uh, I would go back to uh, 
to college. And I was at Sac State. Anybody heard of that before? That's the old name of the school. CUSUS something now, I know. And uh, I was a uh, fine art major. And I would say graphic design, but they hadn't invented the term. It was called commercial art. And the two departments hated each other. And I was one of the few people that went between both of them. And uh, I always thought I was going to be a fine artist. And I had actually had about uh, 11 one-man shows of my paintings by the time I was 19. And uh, then I discovered that the frames cost more than the paintings. And I knew it was not a good plan. So uh, fortunately, I could, be, I could also do design. So I was just working away at Sac State. I was eight units short of my master's, and I got an envelope in the mail from the uh, United States saying, we would like you to go to visit Vietnam. I thought, that's really cool. What an opportunity, you know. <laughs> so uh, I, was only, I was 5'10", but I think I weighed about 124 pounds. So I wasn't really into hand-to-hand -hand combat. So I joined the Navy and uh, was on the USS Turner Joy. And those of you who remember your history, the Turner Joy and the Maddox were attacked by, supposedly, by the North Vietnamese Navy, which they didn't even have. But President Johnson used that to expand the war and to uh, go from 40,000 people up to 350,000 fighters. And so it wasn't until I was, like probably 10 years ago, that I did a little research on the Turner Joy. And we had the same captain, and luckily for me, it was three years after. And that the, the uh, Turner Joy was never hit, even though we, were, we believed it was, you know. And so they just used that as a way to increase the level of the war. And Michael, you were saying that um, while you were in Vietnam that you kind of took new ways to keep that creativity alive. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I did. Uh, since I was a college graduate and I was 23, I was about the age of the officers. And so they kind of left me alone because I got to do cartoons that ranked on all the officers and I put them up in the mess decks. <laughs> and uh, later I was the, uh, this one of my crowning achievements, I was the art editor of the cruise book, which is really impressive, you know. And, <laughs> and I did drawings out, uh, with black ink. We had no supplies. And so I used to collect people's ashes from the ashtrays, and I would make my own paint with, by adding water to it and smearing it around there. And so we had no budget, obviously. <laughs> so when I got out, then uh, I came back home, and I, uh, I was actually, I had worked five years at the Sacramento Bee in the art department. And my teacher, Dr. DeWitt Whistler Jane, he was a descendant of Whistler, he talked to me early on when I was a junior and he said, you know, I think you're motiv motivated by grades. And it's like, isn't everybody, you know? But he said, I think you have a chance of being one of the few professional designers in my class. And I'm gonna work you twice as hard as everybody else. I'm gonna give you really tough assignments because I want you to learn in the highest grade while I'm your teacher will be a B. So if you get a B, think of it as an A. So I respected that, and then I, uh, oh, there I am now. now. See, I was young once there. Um, <laughs> so anyway, what it, what it is, he motivated me. He got me a job at the B, and I worked 40 hours a week and had 17 units. And then uh, something tragically happened in our life. My mother had a stroke and passed away in 17 hours at the age of 50 years old. And that was a, a terrible time in my life. And we were not married at the time. And then six months later, Lindy's mother died at 56. And so these were really tough, tough times that we had to get through. So I left the B after the service and uh, went to become the art director of Graphic Center, which was a large printing company. And Lindy was the designer. And when they hired me, Lindy had no idea that I was the art director until we started comparing salaries one time, and mine was higher. She says, what's this all about? I said, well, I'm the art director. She says, you are? No one ever told her. You know, that's that kind of deal. So uh, anyway, we, um, about two weeks before we were going to get married, we both got fired, which, uh, any of you have been fired? Raise your hands. Oh, that's not enough. OK, be honest. How many have been fired? Come on, let's see. Uh, oh, different hands. I, OK. <laughs> All right. 
So it actually was a blessing because we were going to just go to Carmel for a week. Instead, we said, well, let's take off. And we drove across the country to New York and uh, went to Nantucket in Massachusetts. And I introduced Lindy to my relatives from upstate New York. And so anyway, w when we got back, uh, we worked, f I worked actually for six months at an art direct as an art director for an ad agency. Uh, that's a real secure job. And uh, what happened was then, um, Lindy and I, we really hated Sacramento. We wanted to get out of here and see what else is out there. So we went to visit her sister, who was living in Karachi, Pakistan. And believe me, Sacramento looks pretty good after you go to Karachi, <laughs> Pakistan. So um, I told Lindy, I was down at the travel agent, I said, um, how would you like to go around the world? And she says, what do you mean around the world? She says, I've never been east of Reno. So she has now. She says, we spent uh, 10 months and went around the world and uh, went to 23 countries. And we were doing really well until I was in Tehran and I drank the water. And I ended up in the hospital in Karachi, Pakistan with amoebic dysentery and hepatitis. Went from 150 to 120 in three weeks. And that is not a good way to diet. And Speaking of diet, I almost died. I stopped breathing at one time at 26. I said, well, it's been a fun life, you know. And so she, Lindy hit my chest a few times and I, I came out of it. And so when we came home, we had to cut the trip short uh, by two months. And that's what we did. What, what year was that? Uh, 1831. <laughs> So Michael, uh, tell us a little no, bit about. 1971. <laughs> tell us a little bit about when you and Lenny decided to create your studio. Oh well, and that was easy uh, because we, uh, after we came back, I, uh, I was too weak to work, uh, so it took me a year to get my strength back. So Lindy came to work with me at the ad agency, and uh, uh, we worked there for eight years, and then all of a sudden, uh, it went bankrupt. And we had just bought a three-story redwood home in Placer County. And uh, we thought, you know, why don't we start our own company? Because we want to continue working together. And we had $300 in the bank. You know, that was a lot of money. Was, and that's well, such a big risk, especially when you have a house and, and you're both going into it together. Why did you decide to start your studio instead of just going to work for someone Well, we else? could have worked for someone. And uh, one of the top designers, Bob Rakella, had this really cool Victorian downtown. And he, he wanted to hire us. So he had really cool stained glass all over in front of all the windows upstairs. He says, let me show you where you work. So he took us down to the basement with no windows and a seven foot ceiling. We thought, no, maybe we would do our own thing. So we did. We started it. We had one employee and no clients. And uh, I mean, what could go wrong, you know? <laughs> That's great. Um, and I know that over time, you know, you, you started out with graphic design and eventually kind of started incorporating interiors and restaurant design, and now in retirement you're doing watercolors and photography. Talk to us a little bit about that evolution as a creative. Well, I think it all goes back to high school at El Camino High School. Um, you know, in the yearbook, you, they put down what you want to be. I put down general activities, and that's really... <laughs> That's the story of my life because I kept changing my major throughout. And even in our 33 years, uh, it evolved totally of my job. I wanted to just be a designer. I didn't want to be an owner. I just want somebody else to bring work to me. And uh, it didn't work out that way. So by day, I would be meeting with clients and my staff, like Kevin Yee right there. Say, say hi, Kevin. Here, come take this microphone. Yeah. <laughs> So Kevin worked for us for uh, 24 years, I think. He was like 10 when he came to our studio, <laughs> right out of San Jose State. And uh, we had five people who were with us 21 to 27 years, which is unheard of in, a in a, any design or creative business. So we have just a wonderful staff. I know that during that time, you've been responsible for like 14,000 projects, 14,000 design projects over the course of your career, I was? right? Yeah, that's what oh. you say. <laughs> I wouldn't say responsible. <laughs> yeah, that's the key word. So um, I wonder, you yeah. know, when we're looking at this slideshow of, of all these different projects that you've been on, that you've been a part of all around yeah. Sacramento, some that are so iconic, like the can that's on the front of this building, yeah. right? Did anybody see the can this morning on your way? Yeah. Okay. That was going to be my trick question. 
raise your hand if you recognize anything, and then we're <laughs> going to show the can, but I missed that opportunity. So. <laughs> Tell us what it's like to you know, drive around Sacramento and the region and, and see your life's work. It's scary, because uh, sometimes I'll drive around and I'll, I see something every block and I'll say, no, we didn't do that, you know. <laughs> but um, most of it is, a lot of it is still up. The things that I see most of is probably signage, more so than restaurants. Even though I designed over 50 restaurants, uh, ones that are still around would be like uh, the Firehouse and uh, Frank Fats, California Fats, um, Seasons in Davis, and things like that. And there, it's kind of fun to see it, and it makes me feel good about it. That's great. And you know, what I, I really was interested in talking with you about is how much you fostered a creative community in Sacramento in, in your time, you know, through, the, through ADAC oh, yeah. and through the Envision Conference that you okay. started. Right. You were a really busy guy. You've clearly done a lot of projects. Why was that so important to you to, to not only be part of that community, but to be one of the leaders? There's that word again, community. You, you see, I've avoided it up till now, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. The design community was really pretty strong uh, in the early years, and uh, the Art Directors and Artists Club was a sleepy organization in the early 70s, and uh, Michael Kennedy and Gwen Amos and Frank Burris and I were the young board people who thought the dues, annual dues of $35 a year was too much. So we lowered to $5 a year, because they only had about 35 members, and they would show their favorite job of the week at a real boring lunch meeting uh, once a month. And so we wanted to do more. We wanted to bring in top speakers and all. And uh, I inherited, when I was the president in 1974, a treasury of $35. That's how much we had. And over the years, we built it up, believe it or not, to $182,000 we had in the bank. And how did we do that? We, the different design firms would, uh, <laughs> yeah. There's someone who wants to know right here. <laughs> we thought we'd build our own building and everything, you know, we were just rolling. And uh, anyway, the, the real secret is, and this is, you gotta be paying attention here, I'm Rebecca. Okay, was that each of the design firms would do, uh, Designed for a month for a nonprofit, and we get to use their space, like the Old Eagle Theater and CR2 and different things. And the brilliant stroke of this was, and we got to keep all the profits from the beer and wine sales. That's the key right there. See, this is too early to, for beer and wine, probably. <laughs> Not for all, I guess. But anyway, uh, we built it all up, and we had great plans, and we had the Envision Conference for 25 years. And uh, we would bring top speakers from around the United States. We had Lou Dorsman, the head of CBS. Why was that Arthur something Paul, that was important Playboy. to you, right? Like, okay. so as you're, as you're kind of oh. developing this community and, and bringing in people from the outside, you know, I, we've talked about this a little bit, how there's a little bit of a tendency in Sacramento to keep things so hyper-local. Why did you feel that it was important to bring in outside speakers from across the country? Well, we were looking for inspiration. Um, Sac State, only had one teacher of graphic design at that time. And uh, Chico State hadn't really developed their department. Davis is more fine art oriented. So we really were not getting inspired. So we wanted to bring in top people from around the United States to inspire us. And uh, that's what we did. And it was, and also what, the reason we did it was the firms in the past and in other cities especially they're, they're really looking at each other like competitors. We wanted to break that down and work together on things and lift, uplift the entire community. And that's what we did. We started, we became friends with other designers like you're doing here. This is a terrific group and I'm, I'm real excited. I didn't even know it existed a few weeks ago. And, and now I'm sitting here in this chair. I was like, who are you again, you know? And I'm so excited that, to see this because when ADAC closed, which is been several decades, there was a void in the creative community. And so it's terrific to see this in, in just a few years where it's just exploded throughout the world. I, I think it's really wonderful. Thank you. In addition to you know, starting these creative communities and fostering that, 
that sense of belonging with along amongst creatives. You were also very active with nonprofits, you know, being with the Crocker and the Sacramento Region Foundation and involved with Habitat for Humanity. Yeah. Why do you think that it's important to give back to the community? Well, I think it's critical that you do it. And uh, I w I've been on board of directors for 37 years. And it's amazing how you can help shape a community just being on a board. And the first board I was on uh, was Sacramento Habitat for Humanity. I was on their board for seven years. And the, uh, I've stayed with them as a volunteer for now 22 years. And I'm kind of their official photographer along with Bill Santos. And we shoot all the home dedications of the families. And we, give, uh, we donate our time and we give the uh, photographs to Habitat for Humanity, but also to the families who are, uh, who received the keys to their new house. And, and uh, I never thought of myself as a, a, a photographer that shoots people all that well. But when you volunteer, you're gonna be blessed too. And, and I, I think it gave me a new confidence, that and my 300 millimeter telephoto lens, <laughs> where I could shoot, I'm right up in their face, you know. <clears throat> and uh, that, that's one of the reasons I encourage it. Now with the Crocker, uh, I was on the board of directors, there are 35 of us, uh, for 11 years. For 10 years, we ra helped raise $95 million, and our board of 35 personally gave $18 million. So you can get an idea that we all believed in this. And I continue to work with the Crocker. I'm in charge of a group called Guathmes Gang, which is the 35 board members, the original board members, and we meet every six weeks and we tour artist studios and uh, galleries and museums together, and it's a way to stay connected to the museum. Now with Sacramento Region Community Foundation, you probably heard of the Big Day of Giving, where they raised $7.3 million. Well, when I was on the board, we had about $125 million, and then if any of you have heard of that recession in 2008, that money which was invested in stocks became $81 million. So we had to build it back up, and it's well over that now. And so uh, one of the things we did, and I know I'm going to run long, but um, we raised $400,000 and got a matching uh, $1.6 million from the United States to help people who uh, were losing their homes during 2008. And so we helped save over 400 people uh, who were about to be evicted in That's the region. Amazing. And, and tell us why why you really decided to get involved in that way. Again, you were, had a very busy career with your studio, you're involved with ADAC and Envision. Why was it important to, <laughs> why was it important to find that time and to and Well, I think to you have to give do back. I don't think you have a choice. And you ha if you're committed to a community, you, you really have to support it. And this is one way uh, to do it. And you can't just do lip service. So what I recommend is any of you out that are interested in the community and you want to support a group, write down a few of the nonprofits. There's 4,250 nonprofits in this region, believe it or not. And I didn't just make that up. That's the Region Foundation's number. And approach them, especially if you're good at social media, say. Everyone needs your help. Or if you're a photographer, a writer, whatever it is, Go volunteer and help out. I know Habitat is a great organization. They have a women's build, and they go to Nicaragua every year and build homes there. I mean, get involved. It's, a, it's, it's something you really have to do. I know that we talked a little bit about this, I, this kind of feeling that as someone who's new in their career, that maybe they don't have the ability to be on a board or to, without having that experience or that reputation. Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, of course. The, a lot of times, if you make yourself known to a group and you volunteer and you express an interest to the executive director that someday you would like to become a board member, it kind of plants a seed. And you can do a lot more as a board member because actually the, the executive directors work for the board of directors. And right now, diversity is the key thing for board members. The main problem has been to attract younger people. Most people are building their careers and things. So if you're a young person, a lot of boards are looking for you. If you have that interest, you'd be surprised. 
but uh, step up, you can make a major difference that way. Awesome, and I think we're getting close on time, so last question, what parting advice do you have for the people that's in the community today? Well, as you can see, we've been kind of busy, um, and we've had our time. This is your time, so I challenge you to, to go out and make a difference in this community. Take charge. We've had, you know, we've done our thing. And whatever you're doing now, at the end of your career, it'll be totally different. Your jobs are going to evolve. So get out there and make a difference. That'd be my advice. Michael, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your wisdom with us. Everyone, bye -bye. I, in part, I think you're doing it right now because you're here. And uh, what I like about this group is the, the ability to exchange ideas. And uh, you might be meeting here and find your next business partner. Who knows? You know, I, th I like the exchange of ideas, but you need to be open to it. And you can tell by my background, there's a lot of risk in it. You know, and sometimes you, you have to overcome the fear of risk and you just go for it. And uh, if you do your best work, you should always do your best work, because that's your reputation. There's no excuses in life. You can't say, well, there wasn't a budget, the deadline was good, they had a printer I didn't like. You know, Never apologize for your work. So always do your best, that's what I say. Well, let's see, I think it was number, 1400, because that was the last one. <laughs> yeah. um, when, if you saw all those dresses, you probably wonder what that is. That was the Bridal Mart, and that wasn't my favorite project. But I did, that was one of my last projects where I designed uh, the casino in Rancho Cordova. So, uh, oh, is that a stretch or a question? Oh, okay. But I, I would like to show, ah, that's it. Fabulous 50s Cafe. Can you go back a couple images there? Okay, so I'd, if you saw that burned out looking building, that was a happy stake. And it was on Fair Oaks Boulevard in Carmichael. And the owner, Jeff Tay, was from Singapore. He, and he was young, he wasn't even here in the 50s. But fortunately I was. So from that wreck, I, des I designed the whole building. I did the outside here and I had a 59 Cadillac and a 58 Edsel crashing into the building. And they just installed it. And as well, I was standing out front and there was this huge rear end collision. I thought, God, I'm in trouble. I'm gonna be sued forever. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, that was the only one. And uh, this was probably one of my favorite projects. This was featured in a lot of national magazines, including Architectural Record. And uh, it also led to uh, an award I received from the American Institute of Architects, California Council, and anyone who's an architect who's licensed does not like unlicensed people designing buildings. But they gave me a special award when I was in Pasadena uh, and saying that as uh, the, saluting a graphic designer, and actually had my name on it, uh, that designed a significant piece of architecture. So that meant a lot to me coming from the architects. So this was the opening party we had and Lindy and I dressed up and we paid off the uh, waitresses to cheer like the rock stars that arrived and we came in. Nobody recognized us, which was kind of funny. So anyway, you can see why. Uh, Lindy in her poodle skirt here. But it was like one of the all time great parties. This is the one in Stockton. Um, and uh, this one stayed open longer than the first one, which was like two and a half years. You can make a creative space, but if you're not doing the cooking or the service, then you know, it may not stick around. This was funny, this is a Studebaker, and I put it up in the mezzanine. It was an old Moto Day dress shop at one time. And I got a call about two months after the opening. They said, you know, we're having a problem where the floor is sinking into the basement because of the weight of the car. I said, Really? You have a basement? I didn't even know. <laughs> that's, that's how loose it was. So we had to shore up all the floor underneath it. These, these are self-promos, because that old Dower fellow was Cormac Dunleavy, and he, uh, I found him for $2 in a flea market. 
And uh, because we looked so young, we were 33 when we started our company, that we made him our founder. So we did all these things, like when Irish ties are smiling, and we had Irish band, and we had... What's with the potato? Oh, that, that's the Irish potato. That was a cake. And, uh, <laughs> so we did really well at the party. All the food was based on the potato until you got to the dessert, and it was just terrible. <laughs> Well, first of all, you're gonna be scared to death because uh, especially, talk about undercapitalized. We, um, we had Alice Baker with us for 27 years and Alice had her own company, but she was our controller. And uh, she also did page design for 25 years and she was the go-to person for graphic designers. And she would lay out um, what the problem was or give me a list of three insurance companies and they come in and do the pitch and we would always decide who it is, but Alice was terrific and she kept us in business. Without Alice, it would have been much, much worse or impossible. And Alice just passed away about six weeks ago at 83, and she was a wonderful addition to ours and the other designers in Sacramento. So it sounds like kind of outsourcing the help that you don't want to do so that you can stay well, creative a it's bit. it's not yeah. that we don't want to do it. We didn't understand it. You know, we were always employees. And um, for instance, Lindy was making a big 500 a month and I was making 525 a month. And we saved her salary for seven years. We, we uh, saved it up to, to buy our house. And so that's, um, you have to sacrifice, especially if you have your own business, to, uh, in order to get through it. And, uh, it's quite possible, and, and the reason I told you my kind of backstory is you may be going through similar things, or you may later on, but uh, there's hope. Well, that's a good question, because it, it was on for about 40 years, but what it did is it united us as artists, and uh, less as competitors, and uh, it lifted all the boats, basically, because it made us all better. And we also did the Business uh, by Design conference for about 10 years at the same time. And these conferences took about 50 or 60 volunteers just to carry them off. And uh, I think it, it built up the whole uh, industry because before, when we started, there were no computers. I know that's hard for you to picture. We moved into our studio. If you saw that interior photo, no computers. We didn't get one for about three years. For some reason, they hadn't invented it, you know, so. <laughs>